Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Good to see you in the house tonight. Let's all stand. Amen. I've come expecting God in this house tonight. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 31 says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. There's expectation in the house of God. We've come to wait upon the Lord. I've come to wait upon the Lord. How about you? Amen. Let's call upon him together right now. Let's ask Jesus to have his way. Lord Jesus, we call upon you over this house, Lord. We've come into your presence, Lord. Humble Jesus, and of a contrite spirit, oh God. We desire your presence, Lord, your ways tonight, Jesus, Lord. God, that you would come down, Lord, in Jesus' name, God. As we lift our heart with our hands, God, our voices on you, oh God. Who come to meet you here, Jesus. And we love you tonight, God. You're our desire, Jesus, Lord. You are our desire, oh God. We praise you tonight, Jesus. And we give you the glory and praise, God. In Jesus' name, let's lift up the name of the Lord as we worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are great and to be praised. Lord, you are great. Hallowed be your name. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, you are great. Hallowed be your name. Let all him up right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is your name, oh God. Hallelujah, that we lift up in this house, oh Lord. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, my King. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The water you turned into wine and opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Nobody like our God. None like you. And into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. God is greater, our God is stronger, and God you are higher than any other, and our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, oh our God, our God is greater, oh our God is greater, and our God is stronger, and God you are higher than any other, and our God is healer. Awesome power, our God, oh, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? Stand again, yes. 
Somebody lift their hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, you're greater. Somebody say, God, you're my healer. Hallelujah, Lord. You're my refuge, oh God. You're my strength, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Here is none like our God. Our God is for us tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Would you clap your hands one more time unto God? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer right now. We want to got uh, several requests here. Maria's grandmother stage two cancer. Please pray for T.J. Cooper, Sherry Colson, Jeff Bash. Remember brother and sister Potts, uh, Lorraine Gaskins, and her diabetes is uh, very bad this week. So please keep her in your prayers. Pray for Nathan and Misty and Melissa and Scott. Then also please pray for uh, Brother Scott Razor, who is home, not well. Uh, pray for Laura Christmas for healing. This is a special friend of Sister uh, Linda Taggart's. Please remember Brother Mark's special prayer request. Brother William stopped by. He has a very special prayer request, actually a couple of them. Please pray for the Art Schwartz family. Amen. Uh, he lost a sister 10 days ago, and then he lost his brother, yes, on Christmas Day. So please pray for Brother Art. Uh, pray, pray for Brother, Brother Clyde Campbell, not feeling well today. Sister Ron and Marie Ann. Brother Bagley, it's good to see him in the house of the Lord. Sister Bagley as well. Uh, pray for the Moore family. Say suffered loss. Asking you to pray for Mark Fell. And then also for Mark, for the Mark Taggart, wasn't feeling well today. Anybody else remember Sister Rhonda Cravener, the Lord would touch her, and Brother, Brother Bill Hupp as well. Any others have a prayer request you'd like to make known by the lifting of your hand right now? 
Please keep uh, Sister, Sister Georgia, Georgia Jackson, Jackson in your prayer. Uh, she'll be having a procedure sometime after the new year. Uh, but we just want to give God glory. Amen? The Lord's able, praise God, in any situation. And we hang on to that, praise God. Amen. If you'd like to be anointed for your healing today, amen, please come up around the front and we'll anoint you with oil. I know a God that's able. I know a God that all he has to do is speak and things start happening. Praise God. Amen. Let's call on his name right now and let's ask him to speak into our situations right now. Dear Lord God Almighty, we give you great praise today, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus, for your great touch. Lord, your words, Lord, are so powerful to us, and tonight, oh God, we just exalt you and extol you, Lord. There's nobody like you. Oh God, we pray for Mariah's grandmother, Lord, for Brother TJ's, for Sherry, God, and for Jeff. God, we pray, Lord, that you'd move on Brother Potts, Lord, touch his body, heal his heart, God, heal his kidneys, Lord, tonight, we pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Lorraine Gaskins, Lord, that you'd move on this young one's uh, body, God, that you would heal this sugar diabetes. God, we know that you're able, Lord. And God, we just ask for your touch, Lord, on Nathan and Misty and Melissa and Scott. God, you know, Lord Jesus, uh, Lord, their situation, God, their needs tonight, Lord. Pray, God, you touch Brother Scott Razor, Lord. Heal his body, God, in Jesus' name. God, touch Laura Christmas, God. She's been sick, so sick for such a long time, asking you to move. God, touch Brother Mark's special request, Lord. God, that you would just have your way, Lord. You know what that is. And God, we trust in you for it. We pray for Brother William's special request, Lord. And Jesus, we know, God, that you are the way maker, Lord. You, God, bring, Lord, things into our life. And, Lord, you can run spirits out of our lives as well, God. Pray, Jesus, you touch Brother Art Schwartz and his family, Lord. God, that you touch Brother Clyde Campbell tonight, Lord. Sister Rhonda Murnahan, Brother Bagley, Sister Bagley tonight, God. Give strength, Lord, and healing into their lives. We pray for the Moore family, God, as they've suffered this loss. And God, for Mark Fell, Lord. And we pray for Brother Mark Taggart, God, that you would move in Sister Georgia, Lord, tonight. God, you saw every hand that was raised, Lord, and you know every need, Jesus, uh, that is not here tonight. And God, we just give you praise and we give you glory for it. Uh, and we ask, Lord, for your divine power, Lord Jesus, your healing, Lord, your word, oh God. Lord Jesus, just to speak into our situation, oh God, and to heal tonight, Lord. You are Lord of lords. You are King of kings. And Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks tonight, Lord. Lord Jesus. God, we give you praise and we give you thanks tonight, Lord. We don't want to just come with our needs, but Lord, we want to come with our thanks and with our praise tonight. Lord, we lift you up, Jesus. We glorify your holy name, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you. Turn around and if somebody an elbow or a, or a, an air bump, whatever it is that you do, and amen, we just want to thank you for being here tonight. Amen. There's a new year coming. Praise God. Today's the 27th, so you know uh, we will be having a Bible study coming up this coming uh, Wednesday night, and uh, we're just going to let you you all uh, plan your own. Uh, happy New Year this year. Uh, we're not going to get together and do anything like that. But maybe you can get together with your families and uh, you can spend time with one another. That would be a great thing. But I, I'd ask you to please pray in this, this new year. Praise God. And just seek God for each and everything that is happening. What a, what a year 2020 has been. And so many people had so many great aspirations for it. 2020 and wow didn't uh, it was an exciting year I think more an excitement than any of us wanted but uh, we're thankful to still be here praise God and so please remember that praise the Lord I ask, I ask that you come right now to wait upon you for this evening's offering tithes thank you for your faithfulness amen because of that God's kingdom is growing and uh, 
You may be seated if you want to for a moment, but uh, we had some time to spend with uh, one of the missionaries, the Smith family, uh, missionaries to Guyana uh, last evening, just a little while, not long, but uh, they're doing a great work, and uh, they were actually, I believe, stuck in country for a little while, and uh, there's just not much of a way for them to get back and forth, especially when they close things down. Uh, they did experience uh, a bit of uh, uh, COVID in their experience, in their life. But, uh, so we're just asking, you know, to either remember them, remember all the missionaries. Praise God. I just got a request. Please pray for Brother George. Say Brother George Johnson. Okay. So I'm taking that that means... Uh, he needs a touch from the Lord. So if you wouldn't mind, let's join together right now. Let's pray for Brother George. God, in Jesus' name, we're asking you to, to touch, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name. Touch Brother George, God, minister in his heart and his body, Lord. God, we know, Lord, that you're able, Jesus, in every situation, Lord, to touch him. We pray right now, God, for your great grace on his life. We thank you for his life, God, and for all he is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, also, please remember the Smucker family as you're praying tomorrow. Uh, they will be uh, having the service for uh, Brother Jerry Smucker, Dr. Jerry Smucker. And uh, what, a, what a great man. And uh, we loved him so much, and I know this church did. And uh, we just uh, want to support their family. Uh, tomorrow will be the calling hours from 3 to 6, and then the service will be at 6 o'clock in the evening. That will be at Calvary Apostolic Church in Westerville, Ohio. Amen. So thankful for him. Amen. So if you're ready to give, say amen. All right. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. We're praying, God, that you would bless each giver. And, Lord, that you would help us all, God, Lord, to be blessed by you. Lord, we just thank you for your great touch. Lord, your wonderful, wonderful blessings in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. The ushers will come to you if you want to stand with us. We're going to sing a couple more songs. We're going to glorify the Lord. I think it's great to worship the Lord. How about you? I believe that the Lord is worthy of all the praise and the honor that we can give to him. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. God bless you.
In the name of Jesus, that's it. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to wait on you, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. A sacrifice of praise on you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh Lord, I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, yes, Lord. 
minister to you right now. Oh, would you lift your hands in the God right now. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, oh God, tonight, oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let's all clap our hands to the Lord right now. Can we do that? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let's clap them to the Lord Jesus. God, there's nobody, nobody like you, Lord. You are alone. You are unique, Lord. And we praise you today. We praise you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just come through this Christmas season. It's one that's been different 
than any other that I have experienced with all of what they call now social distancing and all of those things that have been limiting to us. There are some things that can never be limited and that would be our ability to connect to the Lord. Amen. There is nobody like him. Praise God. I'm going to direct your attention today to Joshua chapter 3, John chapter 3, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to give you the title of my message, and I don't want my wife to get too excited. The title of my message is Hebrews. Hebrews. And I'm not talking about coffee, brewing coffee. I'm talking about Hebrews. Anybody know what a Hebrew is? Well, another word is a Jew. In the Old Testament, they called them Hebrews. Amen. Joshua chapter 3, and we'll read verses 14, 15. 16 and 17 in your hearing. Amen. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, verse 15, as, and as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim, I think there's a coffee named brim, or there used to be one. The brim of the water. Listen to this. This is in italics in your Bible. For, excuse me, in parentheses. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. And that just so happens to be when they're trying to cross this thing. God, you just... I heard somebody preach a message one time. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. God, it just doesn't seem to make any sense that you would ask them to cross this river when it's, it's over flooding. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam that is beside Zarephan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off. I think I studied that out one time. It's about 20 miles. 20 miles that backed up the water. And the peop people passed over right against Jericho. Verse 17. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. Everybody say dry ground. In the midst of Jordan and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. And you can read on. It says that the waters return in a little bit. Let's go to John chapter 3, verses, verse 3, one verse of Scripture there. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, Verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. can't even see it. That's why a lot of people say, well, I don't see it. You can't see it unless God gives you that ability. And then in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things. Everybody say old things. They're passed away. Behold all things. Didn't say some. He said all things are become new. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. Oh, I just, I, I feel good tonight. And I just think that Somewhere during this message, we ought to just chuckle a little bit. Just chuckle. Just thank God for what he's doing. Why don't we just pray and ask him right now to touch us and help us. God, in the name of the Lord, God, you've been so good to us. 
Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, for your goodness. Jesus, your mercy. Hallelujah. Let your joy come upon us, Lord. Lord, let it be revealed in our lives, I pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. He, Hebrews, Hebrews. Amen. In ancient times, ancient times, the people of God were called Hebrews. Do you know, have you ever thought about this? What, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, in the Hebrew it means this. In the Hebrew it's that. Well, do you know what Hebrews means in the Hebrew? Hebrew in Hebrew is actually uh, a small word, Ivra. Ivri. It is the singular word of Ivran. So you add the N, or excuse me, the M to it, and it makes it plural. We learned a little bit about that today as we were in our lesson this morning. And so the word Ivri then comes from another Hebrew word, root word, Avar. A-V-A-R. And avar means to cross over. Now, the language of Hebrew is a very poetic language, and there are root words that are, that are used to extract. And so this word avar means to cross over something. And therefore, the Evram are those who cross over. So in order to leave, understand this, the land of Egypt, they had to cross over or through the Red Sea. Now, we might think about that many times. You know, a lot of people want to relate back to movies because they don't want to take the time to read the book. Charlton Heston uh, was, was Moses in that book I, or in that movie, I believe. And, and he was there and, uh, you know, uh, he was there all night, and all of a sudden, here comes this great wind, and it, it blew, and it caused the waters to part, and that was, that was really a cool thing. Now, I don't really think that they did that with real water. I think it was kind of pictures and some cinematography that they used there. But you know what? God didn't use uh, special effects uh, when he was on site because when God parted the Red Sea, he did it for real. Amen. And to, you know, we could go out and possibly stand on one side of Dillon Lake that's in town here. And you might look at that and you might think, what a great body of water. But I would say that compared to the Red Sea, it was really nothing. And uh, the Red Sea was, was enormous. And when they looked at the Red Sea, they... They thought, you know, that God had brought them out of Egypt with so much power and authority. I mentioned this morning that it was ten plagues that God unleashed upon the Egyptians, amen, in order to get Pharaoh to release uh, the people of God. It was his stubbornness that caused uh, the relentless plagues to come upon the land and the land and the people suffered as a result of these plagues and as a result of the stubbornness that came into Pharaoh's life. I want to say today that living a stubborn life is certainly not the way that we need to live today. Praise God. There are many people that, that have troubles in their life and they are determined to solve those troubles on their own. And I would say that that's the hard way. Can I get an amen? The Bible says that the way of a backslider is hard. And if the way of a backslider is hard, let me just say this here. The, the way of a sinner must be even worse to think that there is no thought even for God in someone's life. Hallelujah. But as we begin to look into this study and this message tonight, amen, in order to leave the land of Egypt, they had to cross over that red sea. And then once they were over into the other side, they entered into that land where Mount Sinai was. It was called the Sinai Desert. And they wandered around 
in that desert uh, for 40 years, not because that was God's will for their lives, but it was because of their stubbornness, the Bible says, and that they would not give up and would not obey the Lord and trust the Lord. And I'm here to tell somebody tonight that God's got a plan for your life. God's got a plan of deliverance for your life. God's got a plan of happiness for your life, a life of joy, a life of peace. Can I get a witness here tonight? Has anybody been delivered and found out that the Lord, He is good? Has anybody found out that the, that the ways of God are the better ways, amen, than the ways of this world? There is something about knowing and not just thinking about it in some sort of a mental ascent, but knowing, truly living and experiencing and finding out, amen, that God is a blesser. Sometimes we may look in our situation, we might say, where is God? But I want to let you know something, your situation would be so much worse without God in your life. Amen. Now, this, this Red Sea represented, amen, a, an impediment in their life. It was something that, that they had to get through. They had to get through then uh, this, uh, this desert experience, this wandering experience of 40 years. But in order to enter into the promised land, they were again brought to the water and they had to cross over into over the Jordan River. Praise God. I just want to say this here that before you will ever go into a new dimension of God's love in your life, there be, will be a requirement that you will have to cross over. You will have to go from one dimension to another dimension. But let me just say this here that the impediment is not in, in the way, amen, to cause you to be discouraged. It's not put in your path to cause you to fear, but it is put there as a, necess a necessity in your life that you can go from one thing to the next. You go from one world unto the next. You go from one situation to the next. And the reason being is that God wants us to know that he is the one that delivers us, that there is a change in our life, praise God, that we must experience. Hallelujah. I heard a lot of people that, uh, you know, uh, they, we can talk about faith and we can, you know, faith is more than just some, some feel good kind of a thing. I'm just going to think this and be happy about it. And that's what I'm going to call faith. No faith. Amen. Is, is rooted in the word of God. Faith is rooted in, in God himself, praise God, if you can get a hold of that. And so when God moves in somebody's life and they express faith and they go from one dimension, one, one set of circumstances to the next, amen, there will be a crossing over. There will be a change. Again, let me remind you to go out of the land of Egypt. Uh, they had to go through the Red Sea. For them to come out of their wilderness experience into the promised land, they had to go through the Jordan River. And they are referred to as the crossover people, these Hebrews, if you please. Those who would leave one land and enter another. Those who would end one life and begin a new life. And let me just say this here today, that there may be fear, praise God, that come into people's situations. They wonder, will this work for me? I want to say this today, that the, I have never seen anybody that's given their life to God, amen, that it did not make a difference in their life, praise the Lord. I have been with many people in this baptistry or in the baptistry that we used to have in the back, and I would watch people come up out of that water, and I would see the surprise and the exhilaration that would come upon their faces after they have left their sins behind, an old life that they used to be a part of. Let me just tell you something there's a power there is a change there's a glory that comes over when somebody transitions from one world to another can you say praise God oh let's clap our hands tonight hallelujah 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 praise God the old but the Old Testament Hebrews are not the only crossover people today the Old Testament Hebrews are a type a shadow 
of the New Testament, more born again believers. Amen. We can look back into their experiences and what they had in the Old Testament. And they are there and they are written, the Bible says, as in samples. They are there for us to see how, amen, the struggles that may come into our lives, that we may be challenged with Red Seas in our lives. Praise God. And let me just say this. There are a lot of names that come that come to us in the form of impediments, but I want you to know that God will always be greater than your Red Sea. God will always be greater than the Jordan River that stands before you. And again, let me say, they are not there to stop you, but they are there, praise God, as crossing points so that we can see God move in our lives. Amen. These newborn believers are followers of Messiah. They are spiritual, and we are spiritual Hebrews tonight when we give our lives to God. So just like in the Old Testament, to be saved, one had to cross over from one land to another, from one life to another. We have to pass through a barrier. In the New Testament, Jesus said it this way in John 3 and 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is something about it, praise God, that is powerful. There is a change that takes place that can happen no other way. It is God's process. It is what must happen. That when a man repents, just like in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. There's something that happens. We've got to get through that barrier. We've got to get, amen, into that place of being a spiritual Hebrew. Now, in the New Testament, he said it this way in John 3 and 5. He said, verily, uh, Jesus answered and said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It seems to me that water is the universal barrier that must be overcome in both testaments. But let me just go one step farther here because there are many people that use water for baptism today. They will, some people sprinkle, some people uh, do lots of different things. I've heard lots of jokes about some people using wash rags and and different things, eye droppers and things like that. But every place in the Bible where we see it, they went down into the water. Jesus went down into the water, and he was put under the water. The word baptizo means to dip or to die. I heard about somebody the other day, and they said this, that he was wanting to dye a certain garment. And so what he did is he took that, that garment and he put it into the uh, to a dying solution, and he left it there for several days. Aren't you glad that God doesn't require us to be baptized several days in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. I heard about one guy, he was saying that, that uh, you know, just wait till the bubbles stop. That's how you know when they're, they're good and dead. Heard another guy and had someone ask me one time, can you take me down and, and leave me on the bottom for a little bit? I said, well, sure. I, I took him down and I counted to three. You know, it really, really doesn't matter how long that you're under the water, just as long as you go under the water. Praise God, because like I said this morning, it's not the water that has the power, but it's the obedience in the name of Jesus that's important, praise God. And so God, amen, will wash our sins away. This water thing, praise the Lord, is very, very powerful. Now, Jesus is the Messiah, and he is the king of the Hebrews. In John chapter 19 and 21, said this, then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. I want to let you know something today, that Jesus Christ, amen, is the king of the Hebrews. Hallelujah. To understand that and to know what Pilate wrote that day was so valuable and so important. While they were rejecting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ himself. Amen. I want you to know that there was a people, praise God, that was eagerly standing by and waiting. Hallelujah. Waiting for the King. Waiting for the Messiah to show himself again. Hallelujah. But I want you to know something here, praise God, that because he's 
the one who crossed over that ultimate barrier, uh, that, excuse me, that ultimate barrier from death to life. That is what gives us the power today, amen, to be overcomers in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, aren't you glad that you've got an overcoming power that's in your life? Aren't you got a, glad that you've got a power, amen, that when you need the Lord, all you've got to do is call his name. And he'll show up. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. But he will be there. Hallelujah. God has showed up in my life so many times that I just wonder why sometimes that he does he endure, amen, some of my 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 lack or my my weak faith. We've got to know that God, amen, he's an on-time God. God, he is a God that never leaves, but he will be there in six troubles and in seven. He won't leave you. He won't leave you in eight, and he won't leave you in a hundred, but he will always be there, praise God. The barriers sometimes that are hindering us, we might look at them and we will wonder, are they really the will of God for our lives? I want you to know that if everything was smooth sailing, if the waters were always calm and there were no storms and there were no clouds and all we could ever see were stars at night and, and the sunshine during the day with the gentle breeze, I, I want to let you know we wouldn't have much need for a God. Praise God, we could just kind of do it on our own. We could just cruise through life and everything would be fine. But I want to let you know something, that sometimes God just comes into our life. Amen. And he causes the water, amen, to start getting a little rough. He allows the troubles to come in our lives. Why? So that we can become fearful. That's what the disciples did on the ship. They became fearful and they began to cry out. And Jesus Christ, amen, he allowed the waters to get rough so he could show them that he had the power to walk on the water. I don't know about you tonight, praise God, but I have been through enough troubles in this life to know that he is a God, hallelujah, that can make a way through anything. And so if you're wondering tonight, all you've got to do is call on that name. If you'll just trust him and call on his name, he will show up, praise God. He will be there. He's got the power, praise the Lord, to cross over any barrier. It doesn't matter what it's called. It doesn't matter what it's named. It doesn't matter how long it's been around. We're talking about the Ancient of Days tonight. We're talking about the King of the Hebrews tonight. So we've got to understand, praise the Lord, that whatever the hindering uh, factors are in our life, amen, that they are the will of God and that God allows things to come through, not to break us, but to make us. And so that we can know, hallelujah, that we can stand up in the face of any enemy, of any foe. We can stand up in the face of the devil himself and tell him, get behind me, Satan. Amen. I've got Jesus on the inside. Hallelujah and he's going to lead me through. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like I feel like I'm getting a little bit happy tonight. Praise God. Because the Lord is moving. We need to allow the joy of the Lord to come into our soul. We've got to let the joy and the power of the Holy Ghost to get a hold of us. Amen. There's too much it's too much sourness going on in this world. Too many complaining spirits. Too many people that are, that are just hurting. And, and we've got to call on God. God is our only answer. And he will make that way. The Holy Ghost will give us the power and the victory in our lives. Praise the Lord to cross over to what he wants us to bring us to. You th see, the thing that we've got to understand is there is a purpose. I said there is a purpose to everything. We're not serving just kind of a, of a chance God. It's not a God that's sitting there rolling the dice and saying, well, am I going to help them this time? Uh, why am I going to allow this to be in their life this time? All we've got to do is look in the, in the book of Job and we will see a character, amen, that God loved so much. Praise God that he allowed him to endure hard times. He allowed him to endure troubles. He allowed him, he allowed him to even question and to wonder 
But let me just say this here. At the end of the day, Job knew who his God was. And he knew, amen, that no matter what would come, though the skin worms, amen, would consume his flesh, though the boils, amen, would take over and, and destroy his life, he said, I know this. I know my God in whom I believed in. And I know that at the last day, I will stand before my Redeemer. Let me say this. Our Redeemer lives tonight. I said our Redeemer lives tonight. Heaven and earth will pass away. Praise God. But the word of the Lord will endure forever. Hallelujah. We've got a reason to shout. We've got a right to shout. We've got a right to praise God. Amen. Too many people are sitting back in the molly grubs. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to worship him. It's time, amen, to let the devil know, to let your problems know that I am a spiritual Jew. I'm a spiritual Hebrew. Get off me, devil. Praise God. Amen. I'm serving the Lord God Almighty. It might be a different thing if you were serving Buddha or Hare Krishna or that you are in some other uh, religion, amen, that has thousands or even millions of gods, but we're serving the one true God, amen, that is able to do abundantly and exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. I don't know about you, hallelujah, but there's a power. I said there's a power in the house tonight. Can you take a moment and let's just worship the Lord for just a few moments. God, I praise you tonight. Lord, I worship you tonight. God, I glorify your name tonight. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. There is nobody like you. You are, amen, the way maker. You are the deliverer. Hallelujah. You are the one that takes us through every barrier. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what you're facing tonight. It doesn't matter what's trying to hold you back tonight. God is bigger. Somebody sang a song years ago, bigger than all my problems. And you know what? He is bigger than all your problems. He's bigger than all your trials. If you'll just hang on to him. See, that's the thing that we can, we can believe in, in, and know. That if we'll just hang on to God. Somebody wrote a song and said, hold to God's unchanging hand. Things in the world will change. I was talking to the missionaries last night, and they said, you know, that when we come home, we feel more like foreigners in, in the United States of America than we do when we're in a foreign land. Our citizenship is here, they said, but we feel more at home in Guyana. Let me just say tonight, amen, that, that this world that we're living in is in a state of constant flux. The Internet has changed everything. Social media has changed everything. It's almost as if people are going to uh, social media to find, amen, their place of acceptance. It's not gauged by the Word of God anymore. People used to read their Bibles, and they used to find righteousness wrapped up in the pages of God's Holy Word. But anymore, it's almost as if people are trying to live a life of popular opinion. Let me tell you something. The popular opinion will fall away. Amen. But the Word of God will still be standing. Amen. People's opinions of what's right and what's wrong, amen, will slide back and forth. Amen. They will go with the ebb and flow like the, like the waves of the ocean. But the Word of God will stand strong. The Word of God will be true. The Word of God will be standing a million years Years from now, after everything else has burned up, amen, with the great and fervent heat. But this word that we're, that we're living in, this word that we live by, the name of Jesus will still be the name that's worshipped throughout eternity. Aren't you glad that you know him tonight? Aren't you glad, hallelujah, that you know who Jesus is, that you've been baptized in his name, that you've been filled with his spirit? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to him again tonight. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I remember an old song. It just said this. Oh, somebody touched me, and I know it was the hand of the Lord. You know what? It seems like sometimes that we get so programmed, that we get so uh, ordered in, in the church service that we've forgotten how to get excited about the things of God. I think it's time, amen, that we just get a little bit of comfortable in the Holy Ghost and let the Spirit of God loose in our life. Amen. It's time to worship. It's time to jump. It's time to shout. It's time to clap our hands. It's time to rejoice. It's it's time to magnify the Lord. Why? Because he's king of kings and Lord of lords. It's time, amen, to stand up. Give him a standing ovation. It's time to worship him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil come in your life and make you his child. Don't let the enemy stand in your way, amen, and, and cause you to take a detour. But it's time to go through. I said it's time to go through. It's time to go through the Red Sea. It's time to go through, amen, the things that stand in our way. Why? Because God is going to meet us in the middle. I said God will meet us in the middle. He will be there. He will not disappoint, but he will be a God that will stick closer than a brother. Oh, I'm glad I know him tonight. I'm glad, hallelujah, he came into my life 45 years ago that he touched me and gave me something. As a little 10-year-old boy, I couldn't find myself, but God gave me something that I could get a hold of. Aren't you glad you got something to get a hold of? Aren't you glad you got a God that's there? Amen. When the darkness comes upon you and you can't see which way to go, God is still there. He's still in the same place. You can grab a hold of him and you can ride out the storm. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Can we just raise our hands right now and call on his name? Oh, Jesus, we need you tonight. Oh, Jesus, we call on you, Lord. God, we need you tonight, Lord. We need you tonight, Lord. You are our Savior. You are the anointed one, Lord. You are, you are the glorious one. You, Lord, are the creator of this universe. You're the creator of our joy. Hallelujah. As the musicians come right now, I, I feel the Lord moving in this house. I feel like God wants to touch somebody in this house tonight. God has gotten a divine appointment for somebody in this house tonight. Amen. Is he going to make everything all right? Is he going to cause every problem to go away? I don't know if he's going to do that or not. He could. But here's what I do know. As long as Jesus was in the boat... Amen. As long as Jesus is in the house, as long as Jesus is on site, amen, he can heal every cripple. Hallelujah. He can heal every situation. He can forgive every sin. Just like the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, Jesus forgave her right there on the spot. I'm telling you, if you can get on site with Jesus, he'll make a way right in the middle of your problem. He'll make a way. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus showed up right in the middle of Saul of Tarsus' problem. He was on his way, amen, to destroy all of those people that were living for Jesus, that were repenting and being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. But the Lord struck him down on the path one day, right in the middle of his journey. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Don't you know that what you're fighting, you're fighting me. You're not fighting the things in this world. You see, sometimes God has to take us through some situations before he can bring us through. But after we get through, the Bible says that we will come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come forth as gold, as pure gold. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I remember a service. It's been a long time ago now. It's been over 30 years ago, I think. And I was preaching revival over in Kirkersville, Ohio. Brother, Brother Red, if you remember Brother Red, some of you may remember him, knew him. And I was in there, and I, I remember I'd preached a message. I preached about the joy of the Lord being your strength. And I remember there was a gentleman there. I think his name was, what's coming to my mind is Brother Lemon. I'm not sure if that was his name or not. All I know is that this man was blind. He had been blind for many years. He didn't know what I looked like. All he could recognize was my voice. But I remember one night, one of those services, God moved in. And I remember this elder brother coming up to the, to the altar. You think about it, a man that's blind, he's, he, he could be pretty upset about a lot of things. God, why did you let me go blind? You know, God, I, I think it's a raw deal why you let this happen in my life. But he didn't choose to focus on what he didn't have. But he chose to focus on what he did have. And so he came down to that altar. And other people started. There was a few that came around. And this brother... I can remember. <laughs> His brother came up and he just started laughing. Started laughing. He was praying, calling on God, speaking in tongues, and all of a sudden the joy of the Lord just came over him and he just started laughing. I was like, that's pretty cool. And then another brother in the, in the back here, he, he started laughing. Another one came to the altar and got down there and they started laughing. Me, I went down from the pulpit and I got by that other guy, the laughing boy. Because whatever he had, I wanted to get me some of that. And I remember getting down on that altar, and I remember all of those people. By the time that service was over, the altars were full of people that were just up laughing in the Spirit. And you might look at me, and you might say, well, Brother Henderson, Pastor, that's kind of old, old school. But you know what? I don't know. That the old paths and the old ways are the best ways. There was a power that entered in that room as that man started praying. I knew that he was connected to something. He had been through something that changed him. But he allowed it to change him for the better. If you can hear this, I, I hope you can hear this. There's been a lot of things happen this year. There's a lot of fear that's in this world right now. But you're going to be changed one way or another. Do you hear me? We're going through this one way or another. And you're going to either allow the enemy and the things of this world to change you and to squeeze you into its mold. Or you're going to go through this thing on the Lord's side. And I don't say that to offend anyone. I say it because I feel it from the Lord tonight. And God, you forgive me if it's not you. But I think that we're fighting some things that are very elementary in our lives. 
some things that would like to pull us down and keep us from victory. It's time to fight like we've never fought. It's time to pray like we've never prayed. It's time to trust God like we've never trusted God before. It's time for our faith, amen, to be in Jesus Christ stronger than it's ever been before. It's time to raise up a standard against the enemy. It's time, hallelujah, to allow the Lord to be our king, to allow him to direct our steps, to allow him to lead us. I know there's been a lot of pain. I know there's been a lot of suffering. And I don't speak for myself tonight, but I speak for the Lord. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to contain. The Lord says that he is the one that delivers. He's the one that heals. He's the one that makes the way. Either we trust him or we have no hope. I wonder right now, is God dealing any, with anyone that's under the sound of my voice? Won't you find a place to pray tonight? Won't you find a place, amen, to go through whatever it is God wants you to go through? He wants to bring you through to joy. He wants to bring you through to victory. What's it going to be tonight? I choose to be a spiritual Hebrew. I don't want to wander for 40 years. God, I want your glory in my life tonight. I want to feel the power. I want to feel the anointing. I want to feel, Jesus, your touch. Hallelujah. Won't you pray with us tonight as, as they pray, as they sing and play? Oh, God. Oh God, we are in such need tonight, Lord. We are in such need tonight, Lord. God, we face a new year. Oh Lord, we face challenges. We face fear. But God, we face it in the name of Jesus right now. Oh, that's it. Call on him right now. Somebody call on him. Somebody call on him. Somebody call on him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, send your healing touch right now. In the name of Jesus, send your power, God. Lord, send your anointing, God, that will break every yoke, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Right now, God, oh Lord, God, oh Lord, grind the powder, every stumbling block, Lord, that would come against us. Lord, right now, rebuke every spirit, every devil. Oh God, send them running from this place in the name of Jesus right now, oh God. got some power for someone here tonight. Amen. Somebody's been going through a valley of decision. Hey, it's time. I said it's time. Amen. To call on the Lord. It's time to trust him. Come on. 
Come on. Come on, don't hold back. Come on, don't hold back. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Hallelujah. Fire on my altar, never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. 